I'm Dr Trevor Marks, I'm Head of the Process and Analytical Development Group which is part of Development and Production. The group effectively takes um, potential products from research and engineers a manufacturing process that enables them to eventually be uh, turned into pharmaceutical products. What you see here is a, is a small scale fermenter and we use this as the initial stages of yield improvement. The fermenter itself is heated and we can control the temperature. It's aerated to maintain the oxygen uh, level which is uh, imperative for the microorganism to grow. We also keep the fermentation stirred as you can see. We can also control dissolved oxygen and pH and a number of other parameters here and this is effectively the first stage of us increasing the yield per litre of fermentation. We have a number of these fermenters and they're, they're all identical so that we can actually change conditions in each of the fermenters so that in, in fact we can shorten the timeline of development by using a multiple fermenter bank. The types of organism we can grow are both aerobes and anaerobes. For example, for aerobic organisms, principally we'd look at E. coli, which would probably have a recombinant product within them, although we also work on native products such as Erwinia, which is the source organism for Erwinase. In terms of anaerobes, we also would look at, for example, Clostridium botulinum, um, which produces botulinum toxin, which is used as a therapeutic product. We have a, a range of fermenters at a range of volumes which we can run under different conditions. For example, we'd have around half a dozen of these fermenters which would be the initial screening stages. We can then scale up through 8 litre fermenters, 50 litre fermenters, 100 litre and 250 litre fermenters. In addition to be, being able to offer a fairly routine fermentation, for example E. coli, we're also able to handle organisms at high levels of containment. For example, Clostridium botulinum, we would handle as an ACDP3 organism, which effectively means every, every part of the process is contained and cannot escape to the environment. As part of the transition from the research laboratory to pharmaceutical manufacture, it's important that we also develop the analytical techniques which are used to characterise the product. So, in terms of process validation, what we would be do, looking at at this scale is looking at the critical control parameters for the fermentation. This is extremely helpful when we move through the process as we would tend to start the validation process during scale-up and look eventually within a pharmaceutical facility to do three clearly defined process validation runs. Where there, where there is a problem during pharmaceutical manufacture, we can often take the process, scale it down to this scale, we can do a level of re-engineering required or just investigate the particular problem. Once we've established that, we can then technology transfer back the revised process back into pharmaceutical manufacture. Once we've established fermentation conditions, what we then have to do is look at how we purify the product of interest. We have an extensive downstream processing capability which we can use to maximise the, the yield of the product of interest and to increase the purity to levels acceptable to regulators. In the developmental facility we're aiming to produce a product of high purity and high yield and to consistently produce that. What we offer our customer is effectively a one-stop shop in terms of product and process development. We pride ourselves on working closely with our customers to understand their needs and to ensure that we deliver what they want.